Hi, I'm Arjun, and in this video we're going to go over the basics of 5mm hex shaft. In your first global kit, 5mm hex shaft is the most common way to transmit rotary motion, or rotation around a circle, essentially. In our first global kit, we have 5mm hex shaft, meaning that from face to face, it's 5mm. We have four different lengths in the first global kit, I have two right here. You might be wondering why our shafts are hexagonal rather than round, and there are a few reasons for this. One reason is that objects cannot spin freely around the shaft, meaning that it's much easier to constrain an object to the shaft. This means that you only need to constrain lateral motion al along the shaft, meaning motion along the line of the shaft, the axis of the shaft. Also, it's much lower complexity, as all of the parts in your first global kit will have a 5mm hex on the center of them if they're meant to go on 5mm hex shaft, meaning that there are no adapters needed. There are many things that mount onto 5mm hex shaft. For example, sprockets, wheels, gears, pulleys, shaft collars, spacers, bearings, and high strength hex hubs. One of the parts you can use to mount a hexagonal shaft to extrusion are these pillow blocks right here. One thing that you'll notice is if you try and put a hexagonal shaft through the pillow block, there's a lot of motion and it's not very strong at all. This is why Rev has put bearings into our first global kit. We have four types of bearings. We have short through bore bearings, long through bore bearings, end cap bearings, and ball bearings. I'm going to go over the first three first. These bearings are able to go on, slip onto your 5mm hex shaft, like this, and adapt from the 5mm hex shaft to the 9mm hole inside your pillow block, and they allow you to have much smoother rotation. We have three types of bearings just like this. We have the short through bore bearings, the long through bore bearings, and the end cap bearings. The end cap bearings are a little bit different as they act as an end cap to your hex shaft, meaning that it can't stick out. This helps if you're trying to constrain something along laterally the shaft as it makes it a little bit easier. The last type of bearing is called a ball bearing and we have one of them right here. These ones you only have 10 in the kit as opposed to 24 of the short through bore bearings and end cap bearings, as well as 48 of the long through bore bearings in the 2019 first global kit. They're stronger than those, and they're more expensive also. In order to use them, you have to have a 5mm hex to 8mm round bearing insert. And this adapts from the 5mm hex of your hex shaft to the 8mm of the inside of the ball bearing. The first step is to put the adapter into the ball bearing. Then you're able to put the bearing in, and it's a much smoother and stronger rotation than these plastic bearings over here. One thing to note is while you have 10 of these bearings in the kit, you only have 8 of these bearing mounts in the kit. You can put these, and they have, um, these bearing mounts have a hole sized for the ball bearing, which is different than the hole sized for these plastic bearings. Now I'm just going to clear off the table a little bit. There are more than one bracket that allow you to connect your 5mm hex shaft to rev extrusion. I've already mentioned the pillow block, which is right here, but there's also the hex pillow block, there's the rod end plastic bracket, the motion bracket, the gearbox bracket, and the indexable motion bracket. I'm going to go over these in a little bit more detail now. Here I have a pillow block attached to a piece of rev extrusion. I'm going to show you how to mount a 5mm hex shaft onto this pillow block. In order to do this, I'm going to put a long through bore bearing on one side, I'm going to slide the hex shaft through, and then I'm going to put a short through, short through bore bearing here on the other side. Now you can see I'm able to spin the hex shaft and it's fairly strong. Now I could put a wheel on one side of these and put that here. And not sub I could do that and not support the other side. This is called cantilevering. It's fairly strong, but it's not recommended. Here, I have a demo to show why cantilevering is not strong. You can see that I'm going to push down on the center. 
This wheel here is flexing a lot more than this wheel, which is supported on both sides by a pillow block. On this, on this wheel here, I have a long throughbore bearing here and a long throughbore bearing there, and it's supported on both sides, which makes it much stronger than having it only supported on one side. This is why you should always support it on both sides as opposed to cantilevering the axle on one side, which is what I've done right here. I'm going to bring this thing back here. One thing that you can notice is that this can still slide along the shaft. We need to constrain the shaft laterally so that this wheel cannot fall off. What we can use to do that is we can use shaft collars, which are these metal round things here. We can slide one on and then use the 1.5 millimeter allen wrench and screw it in and tighten it. This makes it so we cannot slide things across the shaft. You can see now I can't slide it across the shaft. One thing to note is that there are two allen wrenches that look very similar. This one is 1.5 millimeters while this one is 2 millimeters. I'm going to continue with the pillow block and get back to these over here. One thing that we're going to need to know is that the face, the top of the rev to this axis here is 8.5 millimeters. We also have this hex pillow block here. With the hex pillow block, we can put a 5 millimeter hex shaft into it without any need for any bearings, though it is constrained to the pillow block. We next have the motion bracket and the gearbox bracket. These two are very similar, and I have a little demo of them right here. You can see that they're at the same height, as opposed to the pillow, pillow block, which is at a much different height. That's because the pillow block is at 8.5 millimeters off of the top of the rev, while the motion bracket and the gearbox bracket are at 20.5 millimeters off of the top of the rev extrusion. We prefer to use the gearbox bracket more often, as it's stronger than the motion bracket because of these ribs over here. But there's only 8 gearbox brackets in the kit, while there's 32 motion brackets in the 2019 first global kit. Here you can see an example where I've actually put two motion brackets together to constrain a shaft. You can see that I've used two long through bore bearings, but I haven't put shaft collars on here yet. We also have the plastic rod and motion bracket, which goes on the end of the rev here. The last of these brackets is the indexable motion bracket, and this one's special because it can go at any height it, you can. It has two pieces, and you can line these pieces up in different ways where there's ridges on one side and then tighten it. This allows it to be used in multiple different places. So you can see here I have it at the 8.5 millimeter height, and on here I have it at the 20.5 millimeter height. You can see that they're lined up. One thing to note about these is that they have one millimeter spacers, so you can go at almost any height you want. There are a few other pieces over here which are shaft spacers. These allow you to put space on the shaft. We have 1.5 millimeter spacers, we have 3 millimeter spacers, and we have 15 millimeter spacers in the kit. 15 millimeter spacers are really useful as they're the width of a wheel, a sprocket, a gear, or anything similar to that. Though that may not apply for the grip wheels in the kit. Also, most of the parts in the kit are made out of plastic. So you can see that the 5mm hex bore right here is plastic. This means that it can round out. So after a lot of use, it might start not working as well. To combat this, Rev has included these high strength hex hubs in the kit, which are metal. There's only a few of these in the 2019 kit, so make sure you use them in the correct places. They have two pins, which will slide into the gear or sprocket or whatever else you're using and strengthen the hex hub by reinforcing it. Again, these make it wider, so it is a little bit harder to build with these, but it's recommended you use them wherever you need it the most. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a comment with any questions or email wizards.exe at gmail.com.